Algeria International presents International Policy Code, a weekly program hosted by Les Fermazari. The United States and its ally Israel have repeatedly threatened to attack Iran over its nuclear program. Tehran, however, has said that it will give a befitting response to any aggression on its soil. Iran also strongly rejects the allegations that is seeking to develop nuclear weapons. Tehran says it needs the nuclear program for peaceful purposes, including generating electricity and for medical purposes. Our guest in our program is Christopher Vasilopoulos, professor of political science and international National Relations at Eastern Connecticut State University in the United States. Professor Vasilopoulos, welcome to our program. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, the Islamic Republic of Iran is suffering from Western isolation. When did all those sanctions go back, Professor? Well, they've, they've been on and off for a long time. Uh, they really intensified uh, in the past 10 years. But America was very upset with Iran because we didn't like the revolution. We didn't like the Ayatollah Khomeini, et cetera, et cetera. We even sided with Iraq, uh, who was the ally of the Russians when and during the Iraq-Iranian war. So it's all been very mixed up. But let me say something about sanctions in general. I don't like economic sanctions mm-hmm. because they, they punish the wrong people. Okay. Yes. The sanctions in Iraq estimated by the U.N. killed about 300,000 children. Exactly. Now, I don't know what was worth killing 300,000 children. Exactly. Well, and that was not during yeah. the war. This was during the Clinton sanctions. It ruins the economy. It's, it gets disease going. They don't get medical supplies. It just fuels extremists that say this is a clash of civilization. See what they're mm-hmm. doing to us. They're murdering our children. Mm-hmm. So I don't like sa- sanctions. I'm very much against. Mm-hmm. Well, the sanctions on Iran have been imposed based on uh, accusations that Tehran is pursuing non-civilian objectives in its nuclear energy program. What are the repercussions of Western sanctions on Iranian politics and economy? Yeah, let me say something about uh, nuclear stuff. I did my master's thesis on nuclear deterrence many years ago. Mm -hmm. And one of the conclusions is if one nation in a region has nuclear weapons, it's unstable. Because Mm -hmm. in order to have stability with with nuclear weapons, you have to have mutually uh, assured destruction. That means at least two nations in a region have to have nuclear weapons, just Mm -hmm. like Pakistan and uh, India. That's more stable than it was before Pakistan had nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. Now, the only country that has nuclear weapons in the Middle East is Israel, and they keep threatening all their neighbors with attack. Mm -hmm. And I think Iran is especially vulnerable because Israel can't defeat Iran in a regular uh, conventional warfare. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. so if I were were the Iranians, okay, (laughs) unless I got really special guarantees that there would be a nuclear umbrella over the Middle East by the U.S., by Russia, by Britain, I wouldn't sign any uh, treaty that would prevent me from getting nuclear weapons. Mm -hmm. I just think it would be irresponsible for the Minister of Defense in Iran to do that. Mm -hmm. I know that's not a popular position, but uh, I'm thinking of it as an uh, international strategist. I'm not looking for votes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, Iran rejects the allegations, arguing that it has committed signatory to the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, NPT, and a member of the International Atomic Energy Agency. It has the right to use nuclear technology but for peaceful purposes. What do I, know, I, I, yeah, yeah, what, I agree with that, but I don't, I don't yeah. necessarily take what statesmen say at face value when, when their national security is at issue. And, well, I, don't, and I think Iran would, be irres- Iran would be irresponsible not to at least get close to having nuclear weapons. I just think that's what any nation would do. Yeah, well, Professor, in, in we, what do Western countries fear the most? Is their fear justified? Sure, there's a fear that a, radical, a more radical group would take over nuclear weapons and then threaten mm-hmm. the whole region, destroy the oil wells, not just destroy uh, Israel, but destroy uh, the, all the oil-producing, energy-producing a- areas. And a nuclear weapon could do that very efficiently. But, mm-hmm. of course, there's a general dread of nuclear weapons, which everybody shares. Mm-hmm. So there are three things you can do. You can either disarm everybody, all the nuclear weapons, exactly. or you can make sure that a deterrent regime exists where it needs to, and that includes the Middle East. Or you can get rid of Israel's nuclear weapons. Mm-hmm. I'm in favor of getting Israel, r- rid of Israel's nuclear weapons. But the United yes. States doesn't even admit that they have nuclear weapons. It's, yes. it's Alice in Wonderland. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> Iran and uh, five uh, permanent members of the UN Security Council, Britain, China, France, Russia, and the United States, plus Germany, are holding talks with the Islamic Republic of Iran in Geneva. What are the major sticking points in the ongoing negotiations? Well, I'm not into the technical details. I don't know mm-hmm. enough about that or nuclear production to know about 
how close you can get with various procedures. But the sticking points are nobody wants to lose the leverage. The West doesn't want to lose the leverage by removing sanctions before other things happen. And mm-hmm. Iran doesn't want to stop other things until the sanctions go away. Exactly. So I just think, they, I think the latest stuff is doing it in a phased way with confidence-building measures. And I think, that w- I think that has a very good chance of working. Uh, I- I- Iranian Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif has said there is no need for any U-turn in ongoing nuclear talks between Iran and the 5 plus 1 group to reach a comprehensive comprehensive deal over Iran nuclear program. What does all that mean, Professor? I agree with that. I don't think, I, I think they can go ahead. The, the are, difficulty are, are, is they, are they determining? To go ahead, I think the Iranians want to get this behind them. I think they want to rejoin the community, open up their economy to, to, to all the kinds of trade that they mm-hmm. can do, especially with Europe. I think that's really important. I think the main sticking point is Israel is adamant against having any deal with Iran. Mm-hmm. So they are just, they can't tell the United States don't make a deal, but they keep trying to put conditions in there that they know the Iranians can't accept. Mm-hmm. Well, I think Israel is the main problem here, an obstacle to getting a deal, especially with regard to American politics. Is the Islamic Republic prepared to accept any agreement with the 5 plus 1 group? I don't know what's in their minds, but mm-hmm. I think if I were advising them, I would come to an agreement if I could get some kind of guarantees, perhaps in a secret protocol, that mm-hmm. there will be a nuclear umbrella over the Middle East, just as Turkey is under a nuclear umbrella with because they're a NATO member. Mm-hmm. We, the Americans guaranteed nuclear security in Japan for 50 years, for 60 years. I don't see exactly. why we can't do the same thing for the countries in the Middle East. Well, many Republicans who now control both chambers of Congress in the United States support imposing additional sanctions on Iran. Do you, see, do you see the Republicans as an obstacle? Oh, of course they're an obstacle. They're, they're hawkish. They believe in this clash of civilizations thesis. They believe all Islamics mm-hmm. are, are ready for jihad. It's just a question of when they can do it. It's racism, and it's not very subtle. Uh, will they have the last word? No, I don't think so. I think a lot of that is, is just domestic politics. Mm-hmm. I don't think they'll have the last word. Well, in response, President Barack Obama threatened to veto any legislation yeah. approving new sanctions on Iran which he said would jeopardize the talks. Is it a goodwill gesture from President Obama to reach an agreement? I think so, and I think that we're desperate for an agreement. The last thing Americans want, aside from the rhetoric, I Mm. see no interest in America putting ground troops in the region. It's Mm. not going to happen. And I I disagree with Obama on almost every domestic issue, but on this one I agree with him 100%. -hmm. Well, Iranian diplomats said they would pull out of the talks if the U.S. imposes any new sanctions on their country. Exactly. Exactly, I would too. Yeah. yeah, what would happen if Iranian diplomats pulled out of the talks? I would pull out and wait for another time. But yeah. I would continue my production procedures, whatever they are. And okay. I would make sure that they know we're doing it. I mean, that's what I would do. You know, my international relations approach is, is, is a political realist, okay? You don't have friends. Morality doesn't have it. It's a question of, of doing the things that are necessary for your survival. Mm. I think nuclear deterrence in the Middle East, is, uh, if we can't have disarmament, is necessary for survival. The U.S. has suggested that Tehran exports much of its stockpile of enriched uranium. Iran has long said it wouldn't do so. Why does Iran stick to that point? Yeah. It doesn't want to export its stockpile. Because yeah. Iran doesn't want to make the world more dangerous by having more people have their hands on a potential nuclear weapons. Nobody wants to do that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's, just, it's one thing for Iran to have nuclear weapons. I'm not sure they would like Syria to have nuclear weapons mm-hmm. or the Saudis to have nuclear weapons. Y- U.S. President Barack Obama has acknowledged that Iran would become a very successful regional power if a long-term nuclear agreement is reached. Any comment about that, Professor? No, absolutely, and that's one of the real reasons to do it. For thousands of years, uh, Iran and, and the Arabian Peninsula and Turkey uh, have been balancing each other off. I mean, look, I'm a Greek. I mean, we fought two mm-hmm. wars against the Persians. I understand this history very well. That's what I teach. But I want Iran in the international community, especially the unless Iraq can be built up again, and I don't see that happening soon. A last question, Professor uh, Vassaropoulos. Sure. Are you optimistic about the ongoing talks? Uh, you know, in preparing for this interview, I did I did some more research than I would more than I would ordinarily do, and I think the, the history of the talks is is constructive, and I, I'm very pleased that they're they're talking about getting it done by March and then finalizing it by July. I just think. I, I think there's much better than a 50-50 chance to get it done, unless some crazy thing comes out of a 
Iran or some, or the Americans or or something that the Americans can pin on the Iranians. I think the chances are good. Christopher Vassilopoulos, professor of political science and international relations at Eastern Connecticut State University in the United States. Thank you for being with us. Thank you very much. It's been my pleasure.